Hi, my name is Sarah Berry and I am going to talk you through today the insertion of umbilical catheters. Here is a list of indications for why you might insert a UVC or a UAC. Before inserting umbilical lines, it's also important to consider the contraindications. These include abdominal wall defects, omphalitis, peritonitis and neck. As well as the contraindications, it's important to consider complications. These can include sepsis, embolism, venous thrombosis, pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, cardiac tamponade and arrhythmias, portal hypertension, displacement which can lead to significant blood loss, breakage of the catheter and intra-abdominal extravasation and neck. This is a list of the equipment that you need for the insertion of a UVC and a UAC. This is a guide of how to calculate the insertion distance for your lines. These can also be found in the handbook and the Neomate app. So we're now going to discuss um, how to prepare your lines for insertion and flushing of the lines. I am going to take my 5ml syringe and draw up some normal saline for flushing of the lines. The bag of normal saline has already been cleaned and allowed to dry for 30 seconds. Just be careful when doing this that you don't touch um, any parts that aren't sterile. And just for flushing of all the lines, I'm going to draw up three syringes. Just making sure that all air bubbles are out of the syringes. Now I'm going to take my UVC, making sure that none of the sterile parts touch anywhere else apart from the sterile drip and I'm going to put on the venous lurlocks. One goes on to each end and then I'm going to prime the lines. Making sure that it's coming out the other end to ensure no air bubbles are in the line. Next I'm going to prepare my UAC. For this I'm going to put a red lure lock on the end of this for insertion. This is to make sure that none of the arterial blood comes up through the line when it's being inserted. And again, making sure it goes all the way through. Once our lines positions are confirmed and we're starting our heparinized solution, we then add on our lure lock, our three-way lock. We make sure that we have a second lure lock on the end that we are going to sample from, like shown here. This has already been prepared and flushed through. I then take my tape and using my scissors I cut a small portion of the tape to put around the base of the umbilical cord. So before starting the procedure we want to check that the baby is stable with a stable airway a servo in situ to ensure that the baby's temperature remains normal. Ensure your overhead heater is working and on. And we only ever do this procedure in the incubator with the top raised to ensure that your sterile field remains intact. Before starting, I always review the baby and ensure that there's good perfusion in the lower limbs, just to compare this with the perfusion after the procedure has happened to ensure that the limbs don't look any different in colour. So we're going to put our drapes surrounding the baby first of all. Again being careful to make sure that none of the sterile sides of the drape touch or get contaminated. These go on both sides to make sure that 
we remain sterile whilst doing the procedure. Next, we're going to clean the surrounding areas. As this baby is above 26 weeks, we're going to use our Chlora Prep. Most babies, whenever we're inserting these, have cord ties on. And if your baby has a cord tie on, I use some sterile gauze to hold this whilst cleaning the area. Ensure all of the cord, cord tie, and surrounding abdomen is clean. And allowing this to dry for 30 seconds. Once this is done, I remove my top layer of gloves. We now put our additional drape over the top. When you have your cord tie in situ, I take gauze in my left hand, holding this while I place the drape over the baby. You now have a fully intact sterile field and are able to begin your procedure. I start by placing my cord tie around the base of the cord, trying to ensure that it stays off the baby's skin and pulling it nice and tight so that no oozing will come from the vessels whilst doing the procedure. Like so. Now you identify which is your vein and which is your arteries. Your arteries you have two of and they generally sit towards the feet area. They generally have thicker walls, are more pronounced and upright than your vein, which is thinner walls and can sometimes sag a little, like so. We generally always insert our UAC, first of all, because the arteries constrict and hold it in place prior to inserting our UVC. For our UAC insertion, I use the box to, get, to collect the equipment that you need to insert it. In this, we have our dilator, our devices to hold our cord in place, our UAC itself, and a flush to ensure it's in correct position. And you can also take an additional syringe that's sterile for any additional blood sampling you need to do at this point. With your sterile gauze, clean away any dish additional blood that is perhaps oozed from the cords prior to locating your artery that you plan to insert your line into. Whenever you have um, your, somebody to help you, they can help you hold your cord in a good position. And this sometimes helps to make your arteries a little bit easier to insert your UAC into. When using your dilator, be very careful that you use it into your arteries with minimal pressure just to ensure that you don't create a false passage and slowly using the weight of it itself just let it drop further down to open up that artery so that you can insert your UAC. Have the tip of your UAC ready for whenever you take out your dilator and can then insert this into. You can sometimes feel some slight resistance at the base of the cord when inserting your UAC, but this, with a little bit of manipulation, generally then passes with ease. The distance that you have measured, as we discussed previously. Once you're at that desired distance, you can then check to see if your UAC aspirates any blood to confirm that you're in the correct position. As this is a dummy, we will not see any blood aspirated today. Once you're happy, 
that your UAC is in the correct distance, leave it to the side before now inserting your UVC. Diane, can I ask you just to hold those in position, just to make sure that that doesn't move while we get our UVC. Uh, we're now going to insert our umbilical venous catheter. We've already identified the correct position for it to be inserted as we discussed previously and it generally is a little bit easier to pass as the vein isn't as constricted as the artery. Once it is inserted to your correct length that we've measured previously, again aspirate from each lumen of your UVC whilst Diana might take this opportunity for you to hold with your other hand, mm -hmm. your UVC in place, making sure you get blood once again from each lumen of your UVC catheter. Again, as this is a dummy, we're unable to show blood being aspirated today, but once you've confirmed that blood is obtained from each catheter, then flush both lines again. So in our unit, we secure our lines using flag tape. We put one set of tape around each line with the base of the tape at the point at which you want it to be inserted. With your suturing equipment in a box, I find this is the easiest way to keep everything in place. With my forceps, I grab my suturing needle like this and with my other forceps, I ensure that I hold my cord in place. When you're identifying a correct place to put your suture in, ensure you do not hit either the UAC, the UVC, or the other artery that you haven't inserted. Generally, I pick to the side of the vein, like so. And pull through just towards the end. You then do three wraps around, go into your other side and pull it tightly through. Ensure that this is tight and then do it three again going the opposite direction. And again ensuring that this is tight. We now go through your flag stop at the base of your white tape and pull it through like so. Once again, ensuring that this is tightly through to ensure that your line does not move in and out. One, two, three again. And pull it tightly through. And then the opposite way. pulling it tightly through. You can now see that this itself does keep your line nicely in position. Now with your scissors you can cut your suture to the base of the cord. Putting everything back in your box we then do this again at this side of your white tape to keep it in position and again twice on your arterial line. Once you've done these four sutures, again make sure that your, your lines are secure. Loosen your cord tie slightly at the base. I keep it in position until I have done the x-ray to confirm my line position prior to removing this but make sure that the tie is not on anywhere with the baby's skin, just to make sure that this does not become necrotic. Once we've done this, we're going to remove our sterile drapes. Then, as I've inserted the line, I'm going to put the labels on my UAC and UVC. I will then request an X-ray to confirm position of the umbilical lines, 
so that would be an abdomen and chest x-ray. Following this, I would then complete the central line insertion checklist. On x-ray, the ideal position of your UVC should be in the inferior vena cava at the level of the diaphragm, outside the cardio silhouette at the level of T8 to T9. For a low-lying UVC, it should be drawn back until it is outside the liver shadow and clearly documented using your x-ray sticker on Badgernet and in the notes. This table has been taken from the Archives of Disease in Childhood. It nicely demonstrates the relationship between the anatomical position of your UVC, radiographic position and possible complications. On x-ray, your UAC will first dip down before entering the iliac artery and will finally lie to the left side of the spine. The ideal position of your UAC is at the level of the diaphragm between T6 to T10 vertebrae. It is extremely important that you avoid the celiac artery at T12, the superior mesenteric artery T12 to L1 and the renal arteries at L1. A low-lying UAC can lie between L3 and L5. Following insertion and confirmation of position on x-ray, it is important you document the position of the lines. In Belfast, we do this on a central line insertion form, on an x-ray sticker, which is placed in the notes, and on Badgernet. All central lines should be removed as soon as they're no longer needed. A UAC should be removed by day five, but can remain for longer at consultant discretion. A UVC placed under sterile conditions can be used to up to 14 days. Once lines are removed, they should be documented in the central line sheet, in the notes and on Badgernet.